Hello and welcome to this next section on artificial neural networks. Here we are going to go into a bit more detail on some of the key processes that take place as information is passed through our network, specifically the weight values, as well as something for the purposes of simplicity I actually neglected to mention in the prior introductory tutorial. Another set of values in the network called bias values. Before we get stuck into all of this, and to make sure that we're all starting on the same page, let's very, very quickly recap the six steps that take place as an artificial neural network goes about its business. Firstly, our data enters the network via the input layer with a neuron for each input feature. From there, these values are passed to and then through our hidden layers, starting with randomly assigned weighting values on each connection and activation functions on each neuron, determining what is passed on to the subsequent layers and ultimately the output layer where we get our predicted value or in the case of a classification problem, our predicted class probabilities. The prediction we get is then compared to the actual value for that observation and the loss is calculated based on how much of a mismatch there is. The network then heads back through from right to left in a process called back propagation and using gradient descent small changes are iteratively made to each of the weight values in a way that should reduce our overall prediction error or loss. We continue to run the same process across all of our data many, many times. And after all of those updates to the weight values, we hopefully end up at a point where the network has discovered a really accurate mapping that links our input values to our output values and would allow us to feed new unseen data into the network and get some accurate predictions. Right, so now we've got this process fresh in our mind, let's talk in more detail about these weighting values that are not only an important part of the process of passing information forward from the neurons in one layer to the neurons in a subsequent layer, but are also what the network looks to alter over time as it learns how to map the importance of each input to the correct output values or classes. These weight values essentially dictate how important the information being passed on is when looking to obtain the correct or at least very accurate predictions. And it's important to remember that while I'm just highlighting a portion of our network in the image on screen here, every connection between neurons in our network will have a unique weighting value associated with it. So in other words, every one of those grayed out connection lines in this image here has a unique weight value as well that will be updated over time. So whether it's the case we see here where we are showing the weight values on the connections between each neuron in the input layer and one of the neurons in the first hidden layer, I just want to emphasize that there are also weights on the connections between each input neuron and all the neurons in the first hidden layer. There are also unique weight values between each of the neurons in all of our hidden layers. And the same goes for the connections between the neurons in the final hidden layer and the neuron or neurons in the output layer layer, however many there are depending on whether it's a regression task like we see here with just one or a classification problem where there would be one for each class. So the overall takeaway from all of this is that there is a unique weight value for every connection, meaning that in our example network here with three neurons in our input layer, two hidden layers consisting of four neurons each and a single output layer neuron, we would have a total of 32 unique weight values. So one on each and every one of those black connection lines. As we've already discussed, these weight values would be instantiated as random numbers prior to training and then altered each time the network runs through the back propagation process. And I've mentioned that word unique a couple of times and it's a really important point to absorb. Each of these weighting values is different and independent. And because of this, they help the network provide its mapping of what is more or less impactful for the final predictions. And while we have 32 weights in our example here on screen, keep in mind that what we are seeing here is an extremely simple artificial neural network. It is not uncommon for networks to have thousands or millions of weight parameters. And if we start thinking about what is being built by companies at the cutting edge of this field, especially in the area of language models, we're now seeing counts in the billions and trillions. 
Cool, so you now know a bit about what weights are and where they exist in our network. Let's keep moving and quickly talk about the other thing that was in the title of this tutorial, biases. And we'll come on to the more intricate details of those soon. But for now, just know that every neuron in our network that is receiving information from another neuron, in other words, all neurons apart from those in the input layer, have a unique bias value associated with them. So while our example network has 32 unique weight values, it would also have nine unique bias values. So we would say that this particular network has a total of 41 unique parameters. Anyway, I think that is enough high level jibber jabber. How does the network use these weights and biases? To answer this, let's start with the simplest possible network, one with a single input neuron denoted by X and a single output neuron for our output value denoted by Y. As these are connected, there would be a unique weight value for this connection. And you can see this is denoted by W. Cool, so now we have the super simple architecture in place. Let's run through an example. And to do this, let's now add in some training data that we have. So both the X values that would go into our network and the actual output values Y. We essentially want our network to find the mapping that links the X values to their corresponding Y values. First things first, let's plot our X and Y values. And when we do that, we end up with this here over on the right. The orange circles on our plot are the positions of each of our data points with respect to their X and Y values. Like I said, we want our network to find a mapping between X and Y. And in this example, that mapping is going to be a line that fits our data as closely as possible. And this all might start reminding you of something. So if you've learned about linear regression in the past, or indeed you've completed the data science infinity section on linear regression, you might remember it is all about fitting the best possible straight line to our data. So in the future, when we get a new value for X, we could estimate its corresponding Y value. And from linear regression, you might remember that to define a straight line, we need a formula. And that formula was y equals mx plus c, where y is a value showing how far up the y-axis we are at any point, specifically in relation to how far along the x-axis we are at that point, with m giving us a value that tells us the slope of that line. Specifically, this value represents the number of units we will move up or down the y-axis for every one unit we move along the x-axis. Finally, we have C, which tells us exactly where the line will cross the y-axis and is often referred to as the intercept or the constant. But why is this important here in this tutorial on weights and biases in neural networks? Well, interestingly enough, each neuron in our network is essentially doing this very same exercise that we talked about before. It is taking in X values and looking to find a mapping that helps us find Y values, which is exactly the same as what we are trying to do here. We are saying Y is equal to some function that we apply to X. Our slope in this case, which we call M here, is the same as our weight value in the neural network. It is the value we multiply our known X values by in order to increase or decrease Y. In our example here, we have just one input, but the high level logic is the same with multiple inputs in the same way that we can have multivariable linear regression. The important thing to know, however, is that in our neural network, if our neurons only had a weighting value and no bias value, it would be the same as us saying that we only had a slope value and no intercept value for our line when we talk about linear regression. And if that were true, then we could only fit lines that pass through the origin of 0, 0. So lines like this or this. And in most cases, these won't do a great job of representing all of the nuance in our data. So our bias value is the equivalent of our intercept or our constant value that we see here. 
it allows us to move our line up or down. And it means that we could fit a line like this one here that we see passing through our data over to the right. A line that has the formula y equals 0.5x plus 2 as we see in the middle of the screen. Again, here we are talking about a super simple example where we have a single input value entering our network. But if we had multiple inputs to our network, and here in this example we can see we have three, then our linear regression comparison still holds true. When we have multiple inputs, the formula for our line of best fit, or more correctly our plane of best fit when there are multiple variables, just extends out to this here, where each of the inputs gets its own unique slope or weight or coefficient value. And then we have a single constant or bias value that gets added at the end. So we have our first input, x1, being multiplied by its unique slope or weight value, m1. Then we have our second input, x2, being multiplied by its unique slope or weight value, m2, right up to our nth input being multiplied by its own slope or weight value. And of course, we have our bias value, or what we would call the intercept or constant in the linear regression tutorials being added at the end as well. So what is the key takeaway from all of this? Well, it's really just that each neuron in our network that is receiving information from neurons in the previous layer uses the math that we just discussed to determine what value it should hold. And it's really, really important to know that. What is also super important to know is that our bias values, just like our weight values, are learnable parameters. And what I mean by that is during the process of backpropagation, our bias values will also be altered just like our weight values. Now, before our receiving neuron passes any of this information onto the neurons in the subsequent layer, we apply something called an activation function, which actually removes this linearity that we're dealing with here and means the network becomes so much more than a bunch of simple linear functions and gives it the ability to solve problems that are very non-linear. Don't worry if that makes no sense right now. We will cover all of this in the next tutorial. For now, just know that bias values have a big role in determining whether their specific neuron will be fired or activated or whether it will not. In other words, they will help determine whether the values from the inputs and the weights push past some threshold that the activation function requires. Again, we will cover this all off in more detail in the next tutorial, but for now, let's just finish up this tutorial by formalizing this process of weights and biases into the common notation seen when reading about neural networks. So let's take what we have on screen now and just focus on that, like so. All I've done here is remove the rest of the network and added in a representation of our bias value for this neuron at the top there in gray. So in total here, we have three inputs in blue, all feeding into a neuron in the hidden layer, which is shown in yellow. For each of those connections, we have a unique weight value here denoted by W1, W2, and W3. And we have a bias value for our neuron denoted at the top there by B1. The formula for the value that this yellow hidden layer neuron will hold based upon the inputs and the weights is what we see on the right here. And while this might look a little bit scary at first glance, I can tell you that this is exactly the same as this from our multivariable linear regression tutorial, just put a bit more concisely. Our formula is saying for each input value, so from x1 through to xn, in our case x3, as we have three inputs, multiply that input value by its corresponding weight value. So here we would be calculating x1 multiplied by w1, x2 multiplied by w2, and x3 multiplied by w3. Once those calculations have been done, that big sigma sign, which looks like a fancy E, is telling us to sum all of those results up. After we've done that, we add our bias value and Voila, we have our neuron's initial value. Now that is all quite 
theoretical. So let's run through this as an example with actual numbers. Let's say our inputs x1, x2 and x3 actually held values of 1, 3 and 3, which you can see in the blue input neurons. Let's also say that our weight values were 4, 1 and negative 2. And let's say our bias value was 7. So first things first, we would multiply x1 by w1, so 1 multiplied by 4, which gives us 4. We would then do the same for x2 and x3, so 3 multiplied by 1 for x2 and w2, and then 3 multiplied by negative 2 for x3 and w3. After that, as we spoke about before, we would need to sum up those results, and this would be 4 plus 3 plus negative 6, which equals 1. Finally, we would add the bias value, which was 7, giving a value for this neuron to hold of 8. Now, as I mentioned before, there is still one more important thing to do before we pass any of this information on to the neurons in a subsequent layer, and that is to apply this thing called an activation function, and we will discuss that in the next tutorial. For now, however, I am happy to say that you now know a huge part of the mathematics behind how information is passed through a neural network. So well done on that. And it is worth reiterating one more time that while we've just shown this for one neuron here, this very same process would take place for every neuron in our network that was receiving information from neurons in the previous layer. All right, I know this was a long, long tutorial with a little bit of math in it, so well done getting through it. Like I say, this is a huge part of the mathematics that takes place, so pat yourself on the back. Now, like I mentioned, in the next tutorial, we are onto something very, very important and interesting, activation functions. And remember, these activation functions will essentially determine whether a neuron will fire or be activated or if it will not. In other words, what value should it pass on to the neurons in the next layer? We are going to look at why activation functions exist, what they do, and the different types that are commonly utilized. I cannot wait for this one. It is very important, but it is going to be a lot of fun, so I will see you there.